Welcome to lesson number two for CSCV 471 at Artificial Intelligence at the University of Arizona. This is our second um, full lecture. It will go over search problems. We'll cover chapters three, um, sectors three one and um, three point two from Russell Norvig. And so the idea is going over this one is kind of go, is going over um, basically defining what an agent is and what a problem saving agent is. So for artificial intelligence and also for the expanded kind of field of machine learning, um, basically your algorithm is going to take in a sensor from its sensors, so any input, and then perform some doohickeys, basically form some sort of AI algorithm, and then it will activate some actuators or perform some action in this environment. And so for, like, for example, for the first assignment, you're going to be making a maze the and search in a maze the input is going to be the maze like layout and then you're going to move the, your agent within the maze and then you have to perform some smart searching to, to figure that out so kind of the first idea is um, solving problems as AI as a search so basically you have a goal that your agent's trying to do and then how do you get how do you get to that goal and you can view this as a, as a, as, um, as a search. So basically you have available space. So say for example in the maze example you have a maze and then you have a goal to get to the end of the maze and then you have only a certain amount of movements that you can do within that maze. In this case it's four directions up, down, east, or up, down, left, or right. And then so Use, using the idea of a search problem as a kind of a way to solve a different goal, we basically, in the, when we try to do something in the real world, so um, say if you want to simulate um, like a driving car, we basically, instead of, we can't render the whole world, it's um, computationally impossible. So we make an abstraction where we reduce the, we reduce the number of states down to basically what's possible or at least what's observable and computational. So think for example if you were doing a car you wouldn't try to um, a car driving algorithm you wouldn't do the whole space you wouldn't do the whole world you do basically what the car can see and maybe ignore and also ignore certain stuff that maybe isn't pertinent to the car like um, bugs or something like that. Um, and so most AI algorithms basically use a simulation or some sort of reduced extraction of the real world environment. And so you have your environment, you abstract it out, and then you basically, um, for a search algorithm, you perform you have basically four different um, things you can do. You have actions, which is where you can move, what you can do, what you can tell your actuators to do your initial state, where you are at that moment, and what's your goal, what you're looking for, and then a cost of what actions you're going to take. So think of um, think of kind of a, where you're trying to like model, you know, a driving car again. What, you know, hitting the brakes, what will be the cost of that? Accelerating, turning left or right, calculate those costs, and you figure out the, the, best, the best path to go along those, those ways. So for the actions, basically for the actions you do is you figure out what you need to do to get the different um, successor states or the successors, where you're going to go next. So for like a maze example, um, are you going to go north, south, east, or west? Um, for a car, you're going to accelerate, decelerate, swerve left, swerve right, turn left, turn right, stuff like that. Basically, in the real world, you're kind of limited by the physics of your actions and then you do a cost function for all of those. Then you also calculate your initial state. This is where you are going to begin and where you are at that moment. And then how you're going to get to the next thing, your goal states based on what actions you can take from that state you're in at that moment. And then also you need to calculate the cost of going between the different states. So the example, the initial example I'm going to give is, so you have an initial state of this, um, this, eight, this eight puzzle and you want to get the numbers in order. So the initial state is on the left here is the numbers are out of order. I'll change this a little bit. 
the numbers are out of order. And what you want to get to is the numbers in order. So your initial state is this, and then you want to figure out the different paths you, can, you need to take to get to the state on the right. And so with every, so at, at this point, this initial state, you can basically do two things. You can move the two to the right, or the, the seven to the right, or seven up. And so you have basically two successor states available. Then you go to this next state, so say in this instance, we have we have we can go back to the initial state, or we can move forward and move the four to this spot, or the six to this spot, which is not um, which you you could do a search to basically determine which way you go. Or you have another alternative: is so if you move the the two over, can you move the four up or the eight over? And so in this case, you have you have initial state of this one, you have two successor states, and then you have a goal state that we're trying to move towards. So we're going to search a different paths until we find that goal state. Now, for say if we do an eight puzzle, the, the size of the space is there's basically nine factorial divided by two options, or about 80, 180,000 different options. So running on a normal computer, um, this would only take, and let's say we can do 10 million states per second. So we can calculate this in the sub-second aptitude. However, if we want to do the brute force, trying every different possible method, this would be possible. But say if you did 10 to the 11, this is going to take a little bit longer. So we have 11 different, or 15 different, pu 15 um, puzzle is going to basically take 6.5 to 10 to the 11. Or we have a 24 piece puzzle. So in the 8 puzzle instance, we could probably try just every little path. But we want to do a smarter path and we're going to get more complicated because the things, um, the the size becomes um, intractable. So for instance, this space would only take less than a second to calculate all the different paths. However, for a 15 instance puzzle, this will take 18 hours and this is probably sub, this is suboptimal. This will take um, noticeably long and you don't want to do this. So you might want to find a better path to do this. So we're just going to do a search agent. And then finally, we did 5 to the 10 to the 24, it takes 16 billion years. Um, to do so this would never be solvable and for example I was running a uh, an AI simulation that I um, that I calculated was going to take um, 40 years to finish and so everyone joked that I'd be retired by the time it, done, it was it was done I said well at least I have a you know a career built out of it but they, the point being is you, you, if you try to do like a brute force type of algorithm on a lot of things, especially these kind of big AI problems, it's going to take forever to calculate. And a lot of times, AI albums need to be real time. So you need to have something that can look at all the different solutions in a sub-second um, performance. And so this is why we have a search problem, is to kind of figure out a better, a better way of looking for stuff. So in the search problem, we have the state space is basically um, what the different states are, we can options to, our initial state where we're starting, the successor functions, the goal state, and then the path cost. So it's basically the same as any as the agent problem, except um, we introduce the state space. <coughs> and so what it, and then the solution for using the search problem is a sequence of actions um, that go from the initial state to the goal state. Or if it's going to take too long, we just basically um, um, we actually just cut it off. But basically, we want to get from the initial state to the uh, state state is what the solution is, and the the number of steps, the number of actions we need to take to get there. And so, for a basic search, we assume the environment is static, and so generally environments aren't static. So it's basically we're doing the search at that moment in time. We do a, a freeze in, a, a time freeze, and then we make sure that assume that it's static and things aren't going to change until we get to the next step. Um, the environment is um, discretizable, so it's it's finite, it's discrete. The environment is observable. We basically see all the different states, and the actions are deterministic. So there's something. There's basically the end when um, something's going to happen if we perform an action that either good nor bad. So we have this initial state space, and then all the different dots represent states, and then the um, the the graph lines represent the different um, successor states that we can go to from each initial state. So we have our initial state here, and then a goal state here. We have three different successor states that we can get to, 
And so we're going to do basically do a search of all these different steps. So this step is basically terminates and doesn't get us to the goal. So this is a path we can't take. And then this path, we can actually get to our step, but we want to go the quickest way. So we're going to go to this next step and look here. Okay, we got these different paths. And then we're going to go depth here. We're going to go to this different path. Now, the reason why we didn't look here is because we were already at this path. So we have a list of all the items, we, all the nodes we visited as well. And then we realize we, once we hit, we're going to go down this path, and we see we hit the goal, and then we're going to stop looking. So we're basically, we're, one of the ideas of a search space is we stop looking once we get to the goal that we're looking for. And so as far as terminology goes, um, we have difference of states and nodes. And so a state is a representation of a physical configuration. So it represents something that happens in the, it's, uh, in the, visitor, um, the real world. A node is a data structure that includes parents, children, depth, and path, and cots. So states do not have um, parents, children, depth, or path costs. Those are something we build when we add a, basically create a node with the data structure. And so as we expand the process, we kind of convert the nodes into states and then add the, con the data structure constraints of a parent, children, depth, and path. So part of the issue with... Um, so go back here. Going back to the um, search agents is how we're going to how are we going to assign these different parent children values from a, a state and then when we convert it to a node. And so for the simple agent simple search agent algorithm, we're going to have the initial state's going to um, basically be whatever state we're in. The goal is something we select. The successor is basically the the actions we can get to to go to the next state. The problem is going to include the initial state, our goal, and our successor. So the algorithm is going to be we're going to pass in the initial state, the goal, and the successor, and then we're going to conclude, have some sort of search, and then we're going to have come with a solution. So the solution can be there is no optimal path to get to something. There's no path, and that is perfectly valid, especially in very long spaces. Maybe you really can't reach the goal, and you have to also determine what you go for there. And then once you figure out what the solution is, then you perform an action for those solutions. So every you kind of loop through these different actions where you have a state and then figure out which path you want to get to get to your end goal. So another example of a search problem is the eight queens problem. We'll also actually have an assignment on this. And basically, you want to create a chess board where you can have eight queens on the board and none of them will be able to capture each other. So basically say no queens can be in the same row, column, or diagonal. So this is an app solution. But this solution is, is not a solution because these two queens here while everything else is on a separate row and column, these two queens are diagonal each other, and um, that will not work. And so for this state, uh, kind of to go on an example, um, our states is an arrangement of 0 to 8 queens on the board. Our initial state will be 0 queens on the board, so empty board, and then we'll add one ran basically randomly and then keep on adding to it. And then and then our, basically our final states get eight queens on the board and then none will be able to attack. So if you do this brute force, there's 60, um, 64 to the eight different states, um, which is, I'll have to calculate it real quick, but which is, how is it, uh, approximately, um, is, basically about 280 um, trillion different solutions. So this would take a while to calculate with brute force. So what we want to do is figure out an arrangement. So we first start off in the left, the left hand board, figure out a solution that, um, so basically have an initial state on the left hand board and then go from right to left, adding a, one to each space where it can attack, and then and then right, basically randomly add pieces where it can't be attacked until we get to the last space. And so this case only has 2,000, basically 2,000 states, which is um, a lot more optimal. So, um, for the different search problems, we have, you might have different initial states or multiple initial states, uh, multiple goals. 
Um, so you can basically have initial states, and then you can maybe go into the same goal, or initial states going towards different goals. But the in the A puzzle problem, it is the path to a goal node, and then in the in the A queen problem, the actual problem that you're going towards um, is the goal node. And so basically, you're trying to get to the best. You're trying to get to the goal node, but whether it's calculating the path. We're just actually calculating the goal, the node, at the goal node at that moment. And so there's, and like anything in computer science, um, there's basically multiple solutions that you can go to for different things. And what you're trying to do is find the best solution for the, the um, constraints that you have. And so you're going to, like any state space, you're going to have a limited number of parameters. And so for the puzzle, the A puzzle, you have basically 180,000 um, and then, but they get larger as the number of spaces. The queen spaces, you basically have 8 to the, you basically have about 2,000 solutions using the optimal, um, the, best, the best formulation. So if you have 100 queens, you have 10 to the 52. So this is again an intractable way of calculating it. But there are techniques to solve this problem um, efficiently. And so basically the point of this is sometimes, like with a lot of these algorithms, the, one algorithm may, may be good for some solutions, other algorithms may not be good for the others. And so for the parameters, you need to calculate the number of states in a space, the size of the memory you need to store the state, and the running time of the success function. So you're basically calculating the computational and um, and the computational and size of a different function. So, like the big tech companies, they basically have unlimited amount of memory to solve problems. But they need to, like Google and Amazon, but they need to come up with a good solution so stuff runs very quickly. And that's the reason why they spend a lot of money. But something like a car has very limited memory compared to a, d a data center at, at Google. And so, the solutions have to be a little bit more efficient, so they have to work more on efficiency. And so kind of the application for the search problem is finding um, the best, based on the optimal air travel, um, calculating the best way to route phone calls, um, VLSI layout is how you would assemble a, a chip, um, automatic assembly sequencing, um, this would be how to optimally um, optimally lay out code um, when you when you use a compiler, and then of course internet searching, where Google indexing basically searches all the links you have on a page, and until they link to a page, until they either don't they don't link anymore, or they they link to a page that's already been indexed. And so summary, we'll start going into search things more in more detail. But we went over the problem solving agent. We talked about safe spaces, successor functions, search, and we also went over um, goal nodes and initial states. Um, the examples we used was the eight puzzle, the eight queen puzzle. Um, and we talked a little bit about um, route finding, robot navigation assembly. We'll talk about those a little bit later in the class. And then basically the assumptions you need and important factors. And then for the next class, we're going to go over um, blind searches. But um, and for acknowledgments, these are um, courses I got material for. So I hope you enjoyed this um, lecture. And if you have any comments, please put them in the discussions or um, email me if you have any questions.